Communication is more than just words. Communication is how we build our relationships, towns, and communities. It is how we show support for one another. And communication is how we record history to share with the future generations. 100 years ago, Tulsa's Greenwood community was destroyed during the single worst incident of racial violence in American history. Because of a lack of communication and conversation, the history of the Tulsa Race Massacre has been forgotten by most of the nation. If we truly want to understand the events of 1921, it is necessary to start years earlier when the story began. In the year 1889, the Oklahoma land rush began. For most, it was a chance at a new beginning, but for African Americans, it meant freedom from racial turmoil after the American Civil War. New forms of communication like the newspaper and telegraph helped spread the word across the nation, and as municipalities in the territory developed, Oklahoma soon became home to the most all-black towns in the United States. So it was practically self-sufficient. We didn't have to go downtown for anything. They were they were very, very loyal to the entrepreneurs that were out there. The dollar turned over 36 times in, in, in Tulsa. Uh, we actually were successful because of segregation. Mm -hmm. uh, it forced us to do business mm -hmm. with each other, and consequently, there was an accumulation of wealth because we supported each other. Tulsa soon became home to Oklahoma's most successful African-American borough, Greenwood. Trust between businesses and their customers fueled the rapid development of Greenwood's infrastructure, and by the 20th century, Greenwood was home to newspapers, hotels, schools, theaters, and a thriving business district so financially prosperous that it was nationally known as Black Wall Street. Black Wall Street became a national phenomenon of black economic development and prosperity, communicating the hope of the American dream to downtrodden African Americans throughout the nation. By the turn of the 20th century, racial violence in America had reached an all-time high. Following the end of the Civil War, racism still persisted throughout the nation. Unequal pay, segregation, and discrimination were still commonplace throughout America. When Oklahoma became a state in 1907, Jim Crow laws restricted the rights of black residents and gave power to their oppressors. Between the years 1907 and 1920, 31 African-American lynchings were recorded in Oklahoma. During the Red Summer of 1919, over 250 African Americans were killed, and the worst was yet to come. On May 30, 1921, a young black man named Dick Rowland was arrested after bumping into Sarah Page, the white elevator operator of the Drexel Building. The next morning, the Tulsa Tribune published an inflammatory article titled, Nab Negro for Attacking Girl in an Elevator. The story accused Rowland of rape and suggested the lynching of him. The Tulsa Tribune has since removed the article from all records and archives. Later that day, Police Commissioner Atkinson received an anonymous message stating, We are going to lynch that Negro, that black devil who assaulted that girl. Mobs began to form around the courthouse until thousands of civilians surrounded the building. As the crowd swarmed out of control, a group of black men arrived at the jail to protect Roland from being lynched. A gunshot was fired, and then, according to the sheriff's reports, all hell broke loose. All of a sudden, my mother was excited is because that she saw four men coming toward our house, and all of them had torches, lighted torches on their side, coming straight to our house. By dawn, swarms of civilian mobs invaded and began the destruction of Greenwood. Whites began looting the empty homes and setting them on fire. Planes flew overhead in what historians regard as the first aerial attack on American soil. Witnesses report that airplanes shot at civilians and dropped explosives on the town below under orders from white city officials. These claims were denied and city officials instead insisted that the planes were used to record the events below. 
Poor communication between the police and survivor recollections leaves us with two conflicting sides of information. Without a proper consensus, it is difficult for us to know the complete story of the massacre. When we came back, nothing but the ground. Home burned down, everything, nothing there. The attack raged on until June 1st, when there was nothing left to burn. The massacre left Greenwood in ruins. Over 1,400 homes and businesses were demolished, and 300 deaths were estimated. In total, almost 10,000 people were left homeless. Well, the national response was actually very muted because the town fathers made a point of shutting down the telegraph, the telephone systems. They did not want the story to get out. The politicians of Oklahoma attempted to cover up the horrific events that had transpired. The massacre never received proper news coverage because authorities prevented the communication of information. Only one conviction was made related to the violence. Tulsa Police Chief John Gustafson was tried for neglect of duty, and his conviction gave blanket immunity to every murderer and looter. The 1921 grand jury report actually blamed black people for the massacre, citing social equality as the main provocation. By blaming the inhabitants of Greenwood for the massacre, Oklahoma further communicated prejudice against its black residents. Even the justice system was guilty of racial bias. As the Greenwood community tried to rebuild, Tulsa passed an unconstitutional fire ordinance that essentially prohibited many blacks from rebuilding. Tulsa's Public Welfare Committee also sought to rezone the now burnt area as industrial land instead of the thriving commercial and residential zoning it had previously been. Eventually, they succeeded in constructing a large railroad hub and station where the Greenwood community had once prospered. New zoning left victims homeless and thus much of Tulsa's black population was not represented in the government. In the year 1922, Ku Klux Klan members swept city and county elections, indicating a new era of oppression for black Oklahomans. The history of the Greenwood community was not a story that Oklahoma wanted to tell nor remember. By excluding the massacre from state history and curriculum, legislators communicated a desire to erase the history from the record. They called it a riot, implying that the blame was shared equally among white and black Americans. Oklahoma actively attempted to silence the media and prevent the massacre from being nationally publicized. They denied reparations to the victims, and as time passed by, they nearly allowed Oklahoma to forget about the events of 1921. In 1996, the Oklahoma State Legislature finally authorized a commission to investigate the race massacre. The commission fought for reparations unsuccessfully, but successfully raised awareness of the massacre to the nation. In 2018, after many years of suppression, the Tulsa Race Riot was renamed the Tulsa Race Massacre. I'm here in Tulsa at the site of the Tulsa Race Massacre. If you look around, you'll see that the community has never fully recovered from the violence. Above me stands the I-244 Highway, which was commissioned in the 1960s to be built directly through the ruins of the Greenwood community. What wasn't destroyed in the events of 1921 was torn down to make way for this highway. Compared to the rest of Tulsa's thriving economy, many people view Greenwood as a slum surrounded by railroads far from the heart of the city. The harsh reality is that Tulsa's city planning in the last century has segregated the Greenwood community into obscurity. Even today, Greenwood is losing its heritage in the form of gentrification as ballparks, hotels, and apartment complexes are threatening to erase what was once a landscape of black-owned businesses. And as that vanishes, it becomes easier for us to forget about the history that brought us here. But there is hope. Through communicating the truth of what happened in 1921, and by choosing words like massacre instead of riot, we are finally reconciling ourselves with what happened here in 1921. And in trying to better understand our shared history, we are communicating a desire for a more positive, optimistic, and inclusive future.